All right, guys, we're going to talk about a few proofs here. You will have a proof on your quiz for sure. We need to know how to write a proof. The proof on the quiz won't be much harder than anything we do today. After the quiz, they're going to take a step up for sure. Um, but we're going to talk through these. This is real close to what we were doing on the other assignment. It's just now we got to write down everything that we know. All right? So I'm just going to go through this kind of quick. Um, obviously, come in and ask questions if you need help. But it says AS bisects angle HAG. Well, one of the things I actually do first is I number the angles. One, two, three, four, five, six. It just helps me know which angle I'm talking about. And if AS bisects angle HAG, that means it cuts this vertex in half. Not this one. It doesn't say it bisects angle HSG. It doesn't say it bisects everything it touches. It bisects angle HAG the angle at the top. So keeping that in mind, what do we know because of that? Well, we would know angles one and two are congruent. So we have all of our given stuff. I'm not gonna rewrite it, but really it's all of this goes here, right? You can rewrite it if you want, I'm not gonna rewrite it. But we know based off that, that angle one is congruent to angle two, and that's just because of this word right here, bisect. It's the definition of angle bisector. All right, so we got that in there. Then they tell us H and G are congruent. Here's H and here's G. I don't need to restate that. This technically is here, right? It's part of our given. I don't have to rewrite the given. There's nothing to say about that. We just know that it's congruent. All right. Well, what else? So that's all we have that was given to us. So then we got to look at the picture. Is there anything we know because of the picture? And the answer is yes. We know that both triangles use the side AS. It's called a shared side. If this was length 10, that means both triangles would have a side that has length 10. So it is the same size for both triangles. I'm going to put a mark on it just so I can kind of see it. But in our proof, we have to get that in there. We have to say that AS is congruent to AS. And what is that reason? Well, we've talked about this some in class, but it's called the reflexive property. Reflexive just tells the reader, hey, both triangles use this piece. This is kind of a no-duh statement, right? AS is congruent to AS. Obviously, that's true. That's not super helpful in itself. But when we say reflexive, we're saying, hey, both triangles use AS. Therefore, it's one of our congruent sides. So do we have enough to say the triangles are congruent? And the answer is yes. If I, this is a little hint that I've showed a few of you, but we, you know, if you trace the triangle, focus on one triangle, not multiple triangles. If you need to, redraw it off to the side a little bit. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but make it look as close to the original as you can. And we have the top, we have the bottom right, and then we have this side. That's what we have. Is, that is angle, angle, non-included side. So we can now say triangle EAT is congruent to what? So this is the next part we have to understand, is what is it actually congruent to? I said EAT. Wait, what am I doing? That's a, that's, that's a later one. I did this worksheet earlier, and I got it confused. Sorry. I'm going to say HAS. There we go. So triangle H-A-S. Think about the order you're doing that in. Look at the angles. Two dash, one dash, blank. H-A-S is two, one, blank. So when I do the other triangle, I want to do the same angles in the same order. Two, one, blank. That would have to be G-A-S. Has gas. Ooh, that's me sometimes. Uh-oh, ooh, I didn't say that. Okay. Triangle has is congruent to triangle gas. And how, why was that? That We talked about that earlier. That is angle, angle, side. But we're not done yet. They're wanting us to actually say HS and GS are congruent. Well, look in our name. HS, GS. Are those the corresponding parts? Yes. Are the triangles congruent? Yes. So what do we know about the corresponding parts of congruent triangles? We know they're congruent. We know that HS must be congruent to GS. That is the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCTC. Remember, we say it real fast. 
All right, moving on. I'm going to go to this one here. This is triangle EAT. That's the one I was thinking about a second ago. ET is parallel to HY. Now, please remember... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Please remember that parallel does not automatically mean congruent. Right? Like here, like if I draw these both horizontal, these are parallel. They're not the same size. So parallel and congruent don't always go together. Just so happens that this time they do. So ET is also congruent to HY. All right, one of the things I like doing is numbering the angles just so I can have it, it's easier to talk about them. So we number the angles, easier to talk about. And we want to prove these triangles are congruent. So what do we know that they didn't tell us? Well, hopefully a lot, because they didn't tell us much. We have one set of sides right now. So we have options here, and I'm going to go through the options a little bit, but use your parallel lines, right? Angle one touches a parallel line. So you start on a parallel line, you turn, you turn on the next parallel line, right? Start on red, end on red. Those are alternate interior angles. We could do the same thing, two and six, alternate interior angles. Those are going to be congruent. Those use parallel lines. So one possible choice here is to, you, is to say 1 and 5 are congruent, to say um, 2 and 6 are congruent, and we would have angle, side, angle, two angles in the included side. That's one choice. Another thing we could do is we could use the vertical angles, and that's what probably most of you saw right away. But we do have to use at least one set of alternate interior angles. But if we use the vertical angles, we're going to have angle, angle, non-included side. So it does change our answer. And both ways are fine, but your proof needs to follow. So your answer should be based on your proof. I'm going to use the vertical angles. So I'm going to say angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. That is the definition of vertical angles. I'm going to say angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. And that is because of the alternate interior angle theorem. And now I have angle, angle, non-included side. So now I can say, there's my E. If I go triangle EAT, it is going to be congruent to triangle, right? That's blank 2, 1, EAT. Blank two one H A Y eat hay. Eat hay. And we said that's angle angle side. Now if you did a different way, if you did two and one, that would have been angle side angle. So just it's based on what you did. You'll be okay. But we're not asked to prove that. We're gonna do one more line here. We're actually being asked to prove we want to do e haw, e haw, e is congruent to ha, E-A-H-A. -A. e -haw. Do, do donkeys eat hay? Who knows? Who knows? Nobody seems to know. But I do know why they're congruent. Look at the name. e -ha. Those are the corresponding parts of congruent triangles, so they're congruent. Feeling pretty good about that? I am. I'm going to do one more with you from a different page. Um... Yeah, this is the one I want to do. Okay. So this one, it says AB is parallel to EC. Does that mean they're congruent? No. Before I move on, I'm going to number the angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So just because of the blue parallel lines, do we have anything? And the answer is yes. Angle two uses this blue line. I turn. And it goes with angle 5. What kind of angles are 2 and 5? They open the same basic direction, right? One's inside, one's outside. They're on the same side. Those are called corresponding angles. So we know that 2 and 5 are congruent. I'm going to go ahead and start my proof. So I'm going to say angle 2 is congruent to angle 5. So it's the corresponding angle theorem. Okay. Now, you might be saying, well, I know 1 is congruent to 4, and you're right. 1 and 4 are congruent, but 4 is not inside the triangle. I, you know, there is a way to do it that way, but it's, it's a little tougher. I'm not going to mess with that. 
Oh, they already used green. Let's go with black. They also tell us ED is parallel to AC. Well, what do we know because of ED and AC? It's a real similar situation. We, we have here angle 7 and angle 3. Same idea. 7 opens up. 3 opens up the same direction. They both use the parallel lines. So those are, again, corresponding angles. They're on the same side, one in, one out. They're corresponding angles. They face the same way. So I'm going to say angle 3 is congruent to angle 7. I'm going to mark it up. Okay. And I can actually clump those. I don't know. Some people argue at that. But they're the same reason at the same time. I'm just going to make that one big, big step, number 2. All right, well, I got two angles. I don't have any sides yet, but it says C is the midpoint of BD. What does that mean? If I told you C is the middle of BD, what would you know? Well, I would hope you would know that BC and CD are the same size. So BC is congruent to CD. And that's just the definition of midpoint. Right? They told us it's a middle. A midpoint cuts the segment in half. That's what it does. So do we now have enough? Do we have angle, side, angle, two angles, and the included side matching two angles and the included side? The answer is yes. So we can now say, and let's say I call it triangle ABC. What does it have to go with? That's blank, one, two. What's the same order on the other triangle? E, C, D. Blank, one, two. E, C, D. And that is angle, side, angle. And then we're asked to prove A and E. Let's see. A and E, are they in the same place? Yes, they are. So we can now say angle A is congruent to angle E. That's because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, so there's a few proofs. Hopefully that was helpful. Good luck.